going to be talking about another one of the great unknowns. I don't know if you like this. I like doing this. And so that's not, it's, if you don't like it, that's all right. That's my problem. My problem is I'm having fun. And so I want to talk about a guy today. He's a great guy. Okay, I identify with this guy. Okay, I identify with him for a lot of reasons that are not really, you can't see anymore, okay? And I'll tell you what, that, what it is later because we're gonna go back and we're gonna trace the evidence. You know, when you have evidence, when the police gather evidence, what do they do? Make a report. They make a report, what else do they do? They tag it. Then they put a stamp on it or tie something, put it in a bag, and you got to sign it, right? First, second, third. And so we're going to look at the evidence by going backwards in time. This guy's only taught, his name is only mentioned twice, okay? His name is only is mentioned twice, and his name is a great name. It's a great name. I wish I was still of the age to have children, because if I had a son, I would want to name him Rufus. Isn't that a great name? That's a dog's name? That's a dog's name? Yeah. I have a friend named Rufus who sells barbecue ribs. I'm not telling him that. You know, his name is Rufus. Is he a roofer? No, he's not a roofer. But his name means red. And now you're thinking red. How does Chet identify with red? I used to be a redhead. I had red curly hair. And I can't tell you how many times I heard those immortal words. You know, poetry is so beautiful and so powerful. I'd rather be dead than red on the head. You know, how many times? But here is this guy, Rufus, and he is a great guy. But we only hear his name twice in all the Bible. And we're going to start with the second one. When Paul is writing to the church at Rome, he says to those guys in Rome, he says, greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord. Wow, that's it. Rufus. Chosen in the Lord. He was, red, he was born red-headed, but that's really about it. He was chosen in the Lord. Now, does the word chosen make you get a little antsy? Because it shouldn't. Chosen is a good thing. He's chosen in the Lord. Chosen means to be selected. What else could chosen mean? When you choose, when you go to uh, an ice cream or a gelato place and you see all those flavors out there, which one do you pick? My choice. Your choice. What? Decision. Decision. It's special. It's special. Favorite. It's your favorite. And it's you making the choice for yourself. I am lousy at making choices for Marianne, my wife, okay? I am, I am dead lousy at it. You know, even this morning, you know, I made the, the choices I make. Uh, she worked hard yesterday in our garden. We got lots of stuff going on around the house. She worked hard. She went to bed early. And come the normal time, she wakes up, uh, uh, 7.30, I chose to let her sleep in. And I usually I'll let her sleep till quarter of eight. But I thought, nah, she deserves better. So I let her sleep to eight. And then I let her sleep to 8.15. And we're, we leave at 8.30. Okay, and I'm thinking that I chose good, right? Doesn't that sound like a good choice? I, I, I see everybody, yeah. I think a good choice would be if you would have made her breakfast. Well, I did. I brought in after I woke her up and she's like, ah! So anyway, I did uh, bring her some tea. But choice is not a bad thing. 
It's where we pick out. It's where we say, what's my favorite? Wouldn't you like God to say to you, you're my favorite? Because yes. he does. In Jesus Christ, you are his favorite. And when we pick, it's one out of many, right? Yes. If there's only one bag of sugar left or one you know, thing of toilet paper and you pick that one, is that your favorite one? No, you're glad to have one, right? It's the only one, right. it's the only one. no. It's, he was picked, he was chosen by the Lord for special service. And when God said to, uh, to, uh, to Rufus, I choose, I am, you are chosen in the Lord, God's not saying, oh, the rest of you, toy. No, he's not saying that at all. Choosing does not imply rejection of the rest. It just says, you're mine. And God said to Rufus, this red-headed guy, maybe he wasn't red-headed, okay? You never know. Maybe he came out red, okay? Just red, babies come out red, okay? Or maybe there was a beautiful sunset, this red sunset when he was born, and, they, and that's why, who knows? Maybe he had freckles. Maybe he had freckles. You know, we don't know these things. Why was I named Chester? I was named Chester in a fit of rebellion. I don't yes, I was. <laughs> My mother and father, they got married right after World War II, about uh, 16 months later, first son is born. My father, Chester Sr., says, Rita, there is not going to be another Chester in this world. Not according to me. I hate my name. I've always hated my name. I'm not going to give it to anybody. And being newly married, my mother was that obedient wife. Seven years later, seven years of living with Chester Sr. had taken the edge off. She goes to the hospital. He's not there. What do we name this, Rita? Chester Wallace Jr. <laughs> she stuck it to my dad. Anyway, but anyway, it was not rejection because it was in the Lord. The motivation of choice is what moves. We choose our favorite. God's looking on Rufus, and we shouldn't say, oh, he chose Rufus. No, we should say, hey, he chose Rufus. Could he choose me? Does he choose me? How can I be his? And it's a motivation to be chosen. And I know this because what Lamont Dozier and brothers Brian and Eddie Holland wrote. They wrote immortal words, these beautiful words. Now, most of you are not old enough to remember this, but when the Four Tops sang, What was that last line? I can't help myself. I love you and nobody else. Apple, peaches, pumpkin, pie. I, I saw people moving, dancing. That's how God feels about you. How he felt about Rufus. We're told that you are a royal people, a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Who's he talking about? Anybody in Jesus Christ. This is yous. This is usins. God's special possession. Why? So that we may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. He, that we can do what? That we can declare praises of him. Rufus, in some way, we don't know the details, but he lived out, he was chosen, and he lived that out. That he was that wonderful light, a, a spoken message 
that we're not supposed to be in the quiet zone. Some of us are in the twilight zone. But we're not to be in the quiet zone when it comes to about who God is. I mean, and it's about whatever you do. I don't care. God doesn't care. He uses us where? Right where you're at. Even a plumber. Even a plumber. Lord, this is the plumber's prayer. Lord, prepare me for the work that you have chosen me to do. In every task before me, may I bring honor to you. May my hands always be prepared to help lighten another's load. And finally, Lord, remind me that the quality of my work is a reflection of you to those around me. A plumber. A plumber. Who get, and how does a plumber do their job? On their knees, digging up holes, pulling out stuff that gets stuck in pipes, broken pipes. It doesn't matter. In the Lord, God wants to use you right where you're at, who's, what's right in front of you. Now, we, now this is, we know something more about Rufus is he's just not out there alone, but Rufus has a mother. And when Paul writes to the Roman church, he says, hey, talk to Rufus, but also his mother. And what, what kind of person was his mother? Like a mother. You have a family that encourages one another in the things of God. You have a family that works together. You have a family that helps multiply their faith. But there's more than this because there was a mother, there was Rufus, but there was also a brother. There was a brother. His name was Alexander. Anybody remember these guys in the Bible yet? I see one head shaking up and down. We hear of them, not because of what they did, but because of what their dad did. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, father of Alexander and Rufus. So we got a guy, Simon, who's from Cyrene. Okay, that, that's, the tra that's just the destination. Cyrene was a, was a big city uh, on the northeast coast of Africa. And it had a large uh, Jewish population. It was in Africa, in Libya. You see where the star is? That's where the father was from. That's where the family came from. So how did he get from there to here? Why? Why would God move him around? Anybody here ever moved around? Did you ever think maybe you're going to get, you know, the reason you got moved around is you did something wrong? And maybe it was a punishment. Oh, God, why are you doing this? Or maybe you're saying it's a choice that we make for a new start, a new beginning. You see, Simon was passing on his way from the country. And they forced him to carry the cross. Simon of Cyrene is the guy, you remember the story of Jesus? Jesus is beaten to a pulp. And he can't carry his cross. They're afraid he's going to die before he even gets there. And what's the fun in that? So they, they pull this guy, Simon, out of the crowd. Now, what does it say about Simon's relationship with Jesus. Didn't have one. 
He wasn't a follower who was trailing along. He wasn't someone who had been following the, tra the trials. It isn't even somebody who had been standing in front of Pilate yelling, crucify him. Because where did he just come in from? Passing by. He was passing by. He had just come in from the country. He was outside the he was outside the walls of Jerusalem. And he's just living life, right? This was not a planned event. Simon didn't wake up this morning and say, I want to do something great for God. There was no light. There was no angelic visitor. Psst, Simon, something special is going to happen today. It's not that. He was doing what? Passing by. passing by. He was passing by. And he didn't even choose this, did he? Who did the choosing for him? The Romans. Do you think the Romans guy had a prayer meeting before this? Oh, God in heaven, who should we pick? To carry this, do you think they did that? No. No. They just, they saw a guy and they yanked him in. That was it. In their mind. But God was going to use this. He was out in the country. We don't know why. But he was coming in. Maybe he had stubbed his toe and is coming in for a Band-Aid. I don't know. But they grabbed him and they said, you. They forced him to do this. In my mind, I think that Simon must have been duped of his management that he got picked. That's a possibility. But we're not told. Yeah. We're not told. It's great to have imagination, but don't, don't let it run too far. He was from Africa. There's a good probability that he was black. That's what tradition says, uh, but that's, that's a guess. They forced him to carry the cross. He didn't volunteer. He didn't sign up to do something he was forced into it, and he did it, and his name lives on. And he had a couple of sons, Rufus and Alexander. And Rufus becomes known to us as a guy who was chosen in the Lord. You see, you never know what's going to happen in these connections. You know, what happened next? You know, Simon carries the cross. He disappears from the pages of the, of the Bible. So does Alexander. But Rufus emerges later on. And Paul says, was known to Paul, says, here's a man chosen in the Lord. Their legacy lives on. Which brings up a question. Brings up a question about our lives. What does our life look like? Is it like this little animation? You know, we're just walking along, living life, and just sort of, you know, doing our thing, and we come to the end, and you say, is that all there is? Or was there a purpose to it? Has God said to you, to me, I have something for you to do. And Rufus chose, chosen in the Lord. Maybe instead of Rufus, it's your name, chosen in the Lord. You know, the first thing is, do you know him? Do you know, this? Do you know Jesus? Do you really know him and say, he is my God, he is my savior? He is the one who died for me, and I've given him everything. 
He's not my boss, he's my Lord. Or next is, what has he chosen for you? It's nice, we like choices, don't we as Americans? Don't we like choices? Yeah. I mean, if they only have four kinds of cola on the shelf, we freak out, right? You got to have the Coke. You got to have the Pepsi. You know, you got to have whatever the store is. You know, and you got to have all these, you know, all these other choices. God says, you know, I got something for you. He's chosen you. It's not a matter of if he's chosen you, but to what? Thirdly, have you been busy with what he's chosen you with or for? Have you been busy? Have you been about our Father's work? He wants us to work. I know it's a very American thing to say, I'm going to work hard enough to the point that I don't have to work anymore. Okay? I get that. But every time you run into a person like I did this morning in the parking lot at Walmart, here's a guy. And the hood of his car is up. What does that mean? Something's wrong, right? So I, and, and I got this Kafka Tesla, so I can't give him a boost. You know, I can't give him a charge. You know, I, but I can go over and ask him. I said, do you need any help? Can I be of any help? Oh, no, I'm changing the headlight in my car. <laughs> in the parking lot. But at least he knew there was someone who asked about him. He wasn't alone. Yeah. You got to be available. And just like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, you got to be burnable. You got to be available and burnable. Think about when God appears to Moses, how does he do it? In what? A burning bush. Okay. It was not a sign like on Las Vegas on the strip. Okay. It was a burning bush. And he was saying to Moses, are you available? And what did Moses say? Sure thing, God, right? Isn't that what he said? He had a list of excuses that would embarrass us. Right? I don't have the right, you know, I got more education than anybody else, but, oh, no, I can't do this. I, oh, I've been a leader, oh, construction projects, oh, no. You know, I can't speak. You know, my tongue gets in front of my eye teeth and I can't see what I'm saying. You know, he can't, all these excuses. Any of this sound familiar? So what's stopping us? What is stopping you and me? What's holding us back? How about us? How about us? You know, we can think of, I can think of lots of excuses for me, but at the end of the day, I'm responsible for my choices. And it's, a lot of it has to do with expectations. What do I expect out of life? I went to my favorite store, which is Walmart. Walmart. I do not own stock or anything else. And I bought this, okay? Collagen peptides, great stuff. It's good for your skin, good for your joints. And when you get to be my age, I need all the help I can get. And so, you know, I did my research, of course, and the internet said this is good, so I must be good because it's the truth on the internet. And so, you know, it's, uh, tr you know, I, I'm looking at it, and it's like, this is the stuff I want to get. And I bought it, and I'm excited because it's, it doesn't have any flavor. I can put it in my coffee in the morning along with my vitamin D pill. And, you know, I, I get home. And I'm, I'm anxious about it. And I open it up, you know, and you open this thing up, and it's got that, you know, seal of, you know, you don't want anybody messing with, right? 
So, you know, I peel it off. Do you see that line? Yeah. You see that line? See, you see that line? That's where it was filled to. And I was like, what? Now, it had the amount that it said it was going to have, but it's in this big stinking tub. And I'm looking in there, and I, and I, I put a line on there. It's like, OK, I bought that much air. I got a good deal. Yeah, it's called marketing. It's called theft. No, we won't go there. I, I don't know. I put one scoop every day. No, no, it lasts longer than that. But, but what was the expectation? Yeah. It's going to be it's supposed. To, it's that big. It's supposed to be full, right? And I looked in, and it was half empty. I'm sorry. It settled. It settled. Yeah. Right. Like popcorn, yeah. And I thought to myself, I had an expectation. I expected it to be full. But it really has the weight that it says it's going to have in it. But I wanted something more. You ever look at life like that? You ever look at life and say, God, I expect this big thing. You've given me a good life, a big life. And you start to look in and you say, what happened? Where did it go? That could be marriage. <laughs> it could be. It's all about the money and everybody's so greedy. Our cereal boxes, everything's like that. But is it our expectation? I'm responsible for my expectation. And if I allow my expectation to drive my life, I will be empty and disappointed and angry and bitter. And I've been there, OK? I have been to the land of bitterness. I have lived in the land of disappointment. I put down foundation in the land of unfulfilled expectations. And I'm here to tell you, it's an empty place, full of disappointment. So the question is that God asked to me, and I, as you're my friends, want to ask to you, I don't want you to live there. God doesn't want you to live there. You know, walk. God wants you to live the life that's right in front of you. It does you no good. It does not bring him glory to be living life while I'm, you know, looking backwards. Okay? Driving while only looking at the rearview mirror is going to do what? It's disaster. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. I got this camera. I got this. I got a, like a 17-inch display in the middle of my dashboard, and it has a camera from out the back. I could watch television all the time, you know, but I'm going to hit something. God says, "Look forward." Remember that. Verse, I said, he has made you a, na a nation of, you're, you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. That's not looking backwards. That's looking from right where you are and going forward. I don't know where you're at. I don't know where you've been. But I know that God wants to take us all someplace. He really does. Not always going to be easy. Didn't promise easy. 
but he promised to be with us. That we are his chosen. Do you ever be, were you ever chosen last for anything? Yes. How about were you ever not chosen when there was choosing to be done and you got left on the sidelines? Been there, done that. I got the t-shirt, I got the button, I got, you know, the bumper sticker. God says, what's right in front of us? God says, I've opened a door that's already in front of you. Just walk through it. What did George say about faith? You don't have to go looking for it. God's opened a door in front of you. And he wants us to walk. Simon was just walking by and he was grabbed and it forever changed his life and the life of his family. Don't wait for God to pull you by the scruff of the neck. Go when he opens the door.